Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Shalade. If you're new here, I love all things DIY, home improvements and interiors and lifestyle. So follow along if you're not already. Today, we are turning the doom room in our house into my working from home office because I don't really have a space to work in the house, even though we've lived here for like nearly one and a half years. This room has just been accumulating loads and loads of rubbish over the past year or so. So I wanted to clean it out, make it a new spot for me to work from and show you that process. Should be really simple. I'll show you some little tips and tricks along the way. Hope that you like the outcome and make sure to watch until the end. So start by taking off the skirting board. In most of the rooms in our house, we're really lucky because it's just stuck on with an adhesive. I'm gonna end up ripping out a lot of this carpet so that I can build the base to the ground. I'm just gonna make sure that the floor is relatively level because we want them to sit as flush as they possibly can. If it ends up that it's not very flush, I'll use packers to build the base out to make it flush. I'm not really using fancy screws just because this is the base. To be honest, I'm just using any screws that I've got, but if you wanna opt for some wood screws, that'll be good. You could even screw this to the wall if you really needed that extra stability. I'm just going to use a stanley blade to cut around the outside of the frame and that's going to allow us to remove the carpet that's underneath giving our base a flat surface to work on you don't have to do this step if you want to keep the carpet intact but i'm going to remove it because we're replacing this carpet anyway So at this point, now that the base is in place, it's on the floor and it's level, I could screw this to the wall to make sure that it's going nowhere. And if it's not level, remember you can use those little slats of wood to pack it out and get it as level as you possibly can. At that point, I would suggest screwing it to the wall so that it definitely doesn't shift. So with the shelves, I've got two long sides, one long back, and then multiple smaller shelves that are gonna go through the middle. I'm gonna be using wood glue because I need these to really hold a lot of weight. Wood glue and screws to put them all together. I'm gonna butt it up and put it on top of the base and secure them into the wardrobe on the side and secure the wardrobe to the wall. So it's all very locked in. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> Hello, hello, it's been a couple of days maybe. We have got the wardrobe and the shelves made and screwed in place. I've also done like a pelmet style topper on top of them to seal it all off. The reason I actually did that was because I measured this side wrong. So instead of trying to fit a new piece of MDF to the top of it and smooth it all out, I decided to just frame it out instead. I've also um, cut down our existing skirting board and I was I managed to reuse it and salvage it, which is really good. There's like a tiny little space where there's a little bit of a bigger gap. And that's because of the width of my mitre blade. It takes a little bit off. So with each cut, it, there's a little bit of a gap, but it looks really good where you can see it. <laughs> and I'm happy with that, it saves me 30 pounds. Now it's onto the beaded paneling. Now I've bought these beaded panel boards from Wix. They are 22 pounds each, I wanna say, and you can get them in two various lengths. I went with the shorter one, and I was thinking that I might have to cut a little bit off the top, but actually I think they're gonna be the perfect height. So when they sit on top of the skirting board, 
they come to around here which will be a really nice height to dress the top of my desk i'm also going to have that lovely piece of wood picture rail going across the top to flush it all out now i was going to move on to beaded paneling for the walls which i'm so excited about but i think i'm instead going to move on to frame the window first because the beaded paneling is going to come up to it so it needs to be in place before the beaded paneling goes on really i've just been in cut my this is actually picture rail from Wix. I've just been in cut it. So essentially, I'm just going to glue it on, nail it in place, and we'll fill any gaps with wood filler, cold kit, and then we can paint it whatever colour we wish in the future. But it should look really cute. I'm sorry about the terrible lighting as well, by the way. That always happens when I'm facing a window. I get a lot of backlight, so it kind of messes up. But I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna let the sun shine and the day. Trying to make this darkness go away I'll paint with colors And I'll sing until my lungs give out I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day And I will leave my windows open So that I can hear the sound of people talking So we're installing the coping for the office. I can't explain how to do coping. It's so difficult to articulate. I have watched a bunch of YouTube videos, but the one thing that always, always helps me out are my pre-cut guides. So I just sacrificed a little bit of length and I created external left and right and internal left and right. And the one thing that you want to note with this is where you cut it, so for example, this is the right internal cut, that is what you keep. So just remember that the, the coven that you can see is what will be kept on that length. So I always, I don't rush into cutting things. I always measure it up a couple of times. And also when you come to cut, you need to make sure you're always putting the top of the coven that's gonna sit against the ceiling on the base of your miter saw or your cutting box. I use my actual miter cutting saw. It's just a little bit easier for me. And what I do is, I was lucky enough to find the projection of the top and bottom of the coven. So that means when it sat against the wall, how far down the wall, how far across the ceiling does it go? For me, it was seven centimeters. So I just measured seven centimeters on some masking tape. So when I put my coving onto my miter saw, I've always put it up to the right line and I get perfect cuts every time or near perfect. They're not always perfect, but I get them as close as I can do without a proper Mitre box and it works out pretty well. So yeah, they're my little tips. Right guys, it's a new day. We're getting some paint on the walls. Let's do it. This color is Villa Oliver by Valspar. It's a gorgeous, deep olive green toned color. I'm hoping it's gonna bring out a lot of the beautiful details of the paneling. It is a deep and moody color, 
but because we do get quite a lovely light of sunlight in this room, I'm hoping it should look really expensive and cozy. Don't be scared to paint a small room dark. I think it's gonna turn out great. Okay, for this next pot, I am gonna be sanding down the Ikea Pax wardrobe door. This is a 50 centimeter door and I'm using 80 grit sandpaper, very like light handedly. I'm just gonna breeze it across the top, wipe it down with a wet cloth to take off any of the dust. And then you could prime it using the Bin Zinza primer, it's really good. I actually think I'm gonna skip it because the paint that I've actually got has a primer built in and I've used it before and it's great. And then you could shellac it or lacquer it off at the end with a polyurethane based paint. You can either use it as a paint you can put on with a brush or you can use a spray paint. Oh, and not to forget, I'm adding mould into this as well to make it extra pretty. Last night, Rob ended up bringing my desk up the stairs with me because I needed two pairs of hands to do that. It's a very heavy desk. I actually thrifted this from an antiques fair last summer with my mum. I had my eye on a desk like this for ages and I managed to get one at quite a good deal. It was about 200 quid. It's a solid wood desk. It's got beautiful detailing and it's on caster wheels and it's the perfect depth for this little area as well it's like I just knew um, because it's the same sort of depth as the Ikea Pax wardrobe that we've used as a cupboard in this room for storage now the next thing I want to do is hang this wall light this is <clears throat> so gorgeous I didn't know if I wanted a standing light in here in this room because I'm just loving having lots of different lighting options especially as it's going to be a room that I'm going to do a lot of work in I don't fare very well with overhead lights, I get really bad headaches. So I thought I could either do a standing lamp or I could try and get one of these down wall lights. Now this is a plug-in one, which, which is great for us because we don't have um, a way of wiring this into the wall. So instead it's gonna be plugged into the wall. I don't have to recharge any of the batteries, but if you're someone that doesn't have a wall plug nearby, you can get a rechargeable battery that you just screw into here and then you can recharge it every time it dies. But this one just means it's not ever gonna really die. So I'm gonna figure out a place to put this and then get it screwed into the wall and plugged in. By the way, I grabbed this tool from Amazon the other day. It's a really long extension for your bits. It just allows me to get my impact driver in the right place without scratching up any of the surface of whatever I'm trying to install. I'm loving how this is coming along. I have got a couple more of these shelves. These are called the Jack shelves. Jack from Argos, I think. Now, I'm gonna put one, two, but I've learned from this before. I sometimes don't measure things and I just whack them in and then when it comes to styling them, nothing fits. So I went downstairs and I grabbed a couple of small frames that I will potentially use to style the area. Um, I actually bought these two more so for the pictures because I love the really dark art and then the gorgeous little flowers. But temporarily, I could probably use the frames as well. And then I've got this, which I thrifted for one pound. It's so gorgeous. I bought this in Grantham last year in a massive antique store and he had a big box of things outside the front and they were all one pound. So I picked this one up. I have no idea what cottage this is. It says the ferry over to Nondee by Ernest W. Hasselhust, 1866 to 1949. Guaranteed to be over 50 years old. I don't know if that's the frame or the picture or both. It's got a little bit of information on the back there in case you're interested. But yeah, I'd love to have a couple of pictures 
down here. Maybe that's too big. They'd have to be on their side like that. But yeah, so I want to have the shelf above the lamp so that if I need to tuck it under, I can. But then I wanted to have enough room on top from one shelf to another so that I could actually style pieces that I would use. So we're going for something around that. Sometimes this bit takes me the longest because there's lots of faffing. Really quite hard to do it by yourself as well because you can't stand back and visualise and hold something up. So you kind of just got to trust your gut and go, just go back and forth a couple of times and then trust your gut. Oh my god, adorable! I love how this turned out so so much every single little detail makes me sing inside I keep walking past the room and like to begin with I kept forgetting that I'd actually done something to the room and walked past and be like oh <laughs> that's beautiful <laughs> I really 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 have enjoyed this makeover it was pretty difficult because I did it in a, just a week back to back it was a lot of hard graft but it's definitely paid off I love it so much there's so much storage there's so many fine details that lean into that gorgeous kind of organic traditional feel with the panelling and the moulding. I love the walnut tones that I've brought through with the shelves and the desk. I've got all of my picture frames that I've been collecting for years. I can finally start to put them around the house. An actual cupboard to hide all the ugliness as well, which is great. And it just gives me a really functional, practical space to sit down and do my work. I've also plugged in that wall light into a smart plug that is connected to my phone. So I can just say, Alexa, turn the light off. Alexa, turn the light on. So it's just really nice when I, if I'm coming into the room with like a handful of things. Oh, I just love all of the tiny little touches, like my little botanical cushion. I also have my gardening books in here, so I'm gonna be able to sit down and do a little spot of light reading. I love the addition of the coving, the window trim. I've also got lots of greenery in here. I've got an ivy plant that I bought from B&Q that's hanging off of the window. And I also got some beautiful flowers that I arranged myself from Sainsbury's. Also painting the radiator cover such a good idea at first i was thinking oh, is it going to look weird being that color because it's such a small room i didn't know if it would infringe onto the carpet too much but it was the best decision ever when it was white it was stark white and it just took too much attention away it just melts into the background which is exactly what i wanted and i can actually still turn it from the outside because i cut a little bit more of it so i could have it between the turn and the radiator itself buzzing buzzing with this room a transformation i can't believe i finally turned the doom room into something practical but let me know what you think as always i want to hear your thoughts i love when you guys leave me some comments so let me know what you think next on the list is the guest bedroom makeover so stay tuned and if you haven't already hit subscribe and hit your notification bell so you don't miss an upload from me go and follow me over on instagram and on tiktok as well so you can catch up with me more day to day i guess i'll see you in the next one take care guys lots of love bye and oh and also if you want to know where anything is from in this video i will leave it all linked down below in the description box for you so keep your eyes out